Chosen One is a YouTuber best known for his videos in which he interviews homeless people and drug addicts. While he has a dedicated group of subscribers who believe he can do no wrong, criticism against him has mounted in recent years and attention has been brought to a number of women who have died, some under mysterious circumstances, shortly after they were interviewed by him. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out, links will be in the description. You can also leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. This video will contain vague discussions of topics that some might find triggering. Viewer discretion is advised. You can head over to my Patreon for an uncut, ad-free version of this video which features extra disturbing details that were unsuitable for this cut. Chosen One is a YouTube channel run by a man named Tom that was created in November 2007 and has since amassed over 183,000 subscribers. Tom uploads very frequently, pretty much every day, and multiple times most days. The majority of these are pretty random vlogs, like short clips of food at restaurants and of Tom's dog, as well as a few live streams here and there. Most of these vlogs don't get many views, usually a couple of hundred with the occasional video reaching around 1000. His most popular videos by far are interviews with homeless people and sex workers in Detroit. A few of these have well over a million views, with the most viewed currently sitting at 3.4 million views. It's not hard to see why these videos are mostly well received, they are raw and unedited, and Tom's no-frills style ensure all focuses on the interviewees and the answers they give to the straightforward questions he asks. Through his interviews, Tom shines a light on the homeless community and encapsulates the lives of people from various different backgrounds that have one way or another ended up on the streets, many of whom are drug addicts or alcoholics. He pays each person $10 for each interview and has also given some clothes and other useful items to some of them. He also encouraged a couple of them to start their own YouTube channels to document their lives and receive donations, and as a result of his attempts to help these people, he has gained a small, dedicated group of supporters who admire the work he does. But of course, if Tom was simply a good Samaritan, there would be no reason for me to make a video on him. Turns out when you dig a bit deeper, there may be more to this man than initially meets the eye. There have been some extremely disturbing allegations against him, we'll get to those soon, but first let's take a look at some of the general criticism of him and his channel. As I already mentioned, Tom pays interviewees $10 for each video they feature in, which is arguably a nice gesture regardless. However, it has been pointed out that Tom is profiting significantly from these videos, so $10 is kind of a drop in the ocean, considering these people are literally on the streets. And they are the sole reason he is able to make a living from YouTube, as he may well not even meet the criteria for monetization from his other videos alone. He has been called out numerous times for seemingly lying about the monetization status of his videos. A few years ago, he claimed on more than one occasion that he was demonetized. I'm not sure if he still claims that now, but he said this in relation to the videos where he interviews homeless people. For anyone who isn't a content creator and might not know how this works, demonetized would imply that either certain videos were not suitable for any advertisers or that his whole channel is not eligible for monetization at all. To give him the benefit of the doubt, he may well simply be using the wrong word here, as at other times he claimed that his videos have limited ads, meaning they aren't suitable for most advertisers, but still earn revenue from some advertisers and YouTube premium subscriptions. If that was the case, Tom likely wouldn't be making a substantial amount of money even on the videos that have over a million views. 
It's hard to speculate on how much, because ad revenue depends on a number of factors, such as the demographics of a channel's viewers. He claimed that you make $4 for every 1,000 views. I'm not really sure where he pulled that figure from though, as there is no set rate. In addition to the factors that affect how much you learn from each ad, it would also depend on the length of the video and how many ads he chose to place in them. Regardless, it appears that most, if not all of his videos, are fully monetized. You can check that out for yourself now, and while the criteria for monetization has varied over the years, it used to be a lot more lax prior to what is sometimes referred to as the adpocalypse, then it got stricter and recently seems to have eased off a bit more. You can find various screenshots online of ads on Tom's videos from around that time, casting doubt on his claims that his videos were marked limited or no ads. In fact, according to Social Blade at the time, he was making up to $20,000 a month, and that could even be a low estimate, as many creators have stated that their earnings exceed Social Blade's estimates. But given the fact that the site isn't 100% accurate when it comes to earning predictions, his earnings could have been lower than that. It wouldn't be hard for Tom to prove that he doesn't make much money on YouTube, all that it would take is a screenshot of his analytics, yet for some reason he has never done this. No one is suggesting that he donates all his earnings to the people who feature in his videos, he has to make a living somehow, but he has been criticised for not doing more to help them, when he likely makes a significant profit off them. When one woman asked if he could give her $20 rather than $10, he bluntly replied, No I can't, it's only for 5 minutes. One of the women he interviewed, Kelly, claimed that she was told prior to agreeing to the interview that Tom would give her all the money he made from the interview, yet according to her, he never gave her a penny aside from the $10. She implied that she believes he keeps some of the donations that his subscribers send him to give to the homeless people. He has accidentally opened cards addressed to specific people from his videos on multiple occasions, so it is possible that he takes out some of the money before passing on the cards. I've seen him tell some of the women he interviews that if the videos made money on YouTube, he would give them all the money, so he has blatantly lied to them. Furthermore, simply handing them money, knowing full well many of them are drug addicts, isn't exactly the most responsible decision when he could buy them food or vouchers for necessities instead. Viewers can donate money through Tom, he has been known to give them $2,000 in cash all at once, and when viewers warn him that's probably not a good idea, he gives snarky responses. For example, one comment read, be careful, Tom, when giving those girls the big checks or 2,000 cash. Word can get out fast on the street, and the poor girls could get jumped for it. I'm sure you'll figure out the best way to do it. Thanks for helping. He simply responded, Thanks, Mum. Another comment on the same video read, Tom, do you realise when you give them money they are shooting it in their arms? He replied, Donna, quit these stupid slash ignorant comments or I'm going to block you. I watch these women buy food and pay cell phone bills, etc. Arguably, it's two or three less vehicles these women have to get in. Like Calvin Murray said, these women are going to get high with or without me. This is just my opinion, but I really don't believe that he watches what they spend the money on, and if he really wants them to buy food or pay phone bills, why doesn't he just buy those things to give to them or get them vouchers? He has acknowledged before that the money he gave people has been spent on drugs, even resulting in the hospitalisation of one of these women, but accepts no responsibility for that, and says he has next to no hope that they would ever recover from their addictions anyway. Sure, if they want to get high, they probably will one way or another, but he doesn't have to facilitate and enable it, and he could ensure they have the necessities at least. As a side note, Tom has been accused of wire fraud, as he allegedly receives a lot more in donations than he's known to actually give to the homeless, though take that with a pinch of salt, as while it is perhaps believable, I have no way of confirming it. It has been suggested that Tom doesn't actually want them to get clean, because while they're addicted to drugs and on the streets, he can continue profiting off their stories, and if anything happens to them, which it has on numerous occasions, that, in his eyes, is just a more dramatic story that will make him even more money. Various people have claimed that when they contacted Tom asking how they could donate clothes and other items, they were either ignored, told no, or even blocked in some cases. 
He has been known to give items as well as cash to these people, though I believe this only began after he was called out for not doing so, and I wonder if the decision was simply to limit the things he could be criticised for, as his image seems very important to him. A couple of the people who Tom interviewed actually did manage to kick their addictions and claimed that once they got clean, Tom totally lost interest in them and refused to help them further. Whether or not they are telling the truth is hard to determine, as some have been caught out for lying about other things and have been involved in various scandals themselves. It appears that Tom has turned a blind eye to some of these scandals, presumably so he can push a certain narrative and continue interviewing and profiting off them. For example, he continued to interview a woman who it emerged had abused her children prior to her becoming homeless, and deleted any comments mentioning this on his videos. It's also worth noting that although he asks the interviewees at the start of each video if they mind being filmed, and the video being uploaded to YouTube, they are often high at the time, and therefore arguably not able to consent to that. One woman named Chelsea was clearly out of it, and her demeanour changed seconds into the interview as she began muttering and backed off from Tom, but he continued filming her before talking to the man that she was with. Some of these women or their families have asked him to delete the videos at a later date, and in most cases he has refused. Before he started interviewing people, he started out posting videos of homeless people filmed from a distance, clearly not gaining their consent until he decided to approach them and ask questions. This all could suggest that he is more bothered about maintaining the facade that earns him a paycheck, rather than adhering to ethical standards that he should be considering when working with vulnerable people. Although Tom generally handles the interviews he conducts well, if you watch enough, you start to notice a few red flags that make me wonder if he sometimes prioritises the results of the videos, i.e. the profit he generates or his charitable image, over the well-being of the interviewees. For example, in one video, he speaks with and gives donations to a woman named Maddie, who has wounds on her face because she got into a fight. He tells her to stand in the sun to get the lighting right, and she puts her hand up to her face to shield her eyes from the sun, and he tells her to put her hand down twice, even though it's clear that the sun is hurting her eyes. It seems like the entire purpose of this video was to prove he gives donations to the women after he was accused of keeping some for himself, as he says that now people can see that the women are receiving them, though obviously that doesn't prove that all the donations are going where they're supposed to. Sometimes the interviewees will avoid questions, or outright tell Tom that they don't want to answer as it's clearly upsetting them. I've noticed he often goes back to those questions later in the interview. He also often interrupts the interviewees, sometimes when they're telling a personal story, to direct them back to the questions he wants answers to. It's like he has a set checklist of the information he wants to find out, and doesn't mind being rude and insensitive as long as he gets that. Some of his unrelated videos are questionable too, like one where there's a nine-year-old girl eating sweets in the passenger seat of his van, I don't even know who she is, and he tells her to smoke it like a cigarette, and asks when she's going to switch to real cigarettes. It's in his live streams where the mask rarely slips though, and he has been known to get drunk and start angrily ranting about various topics, including being rude and disrespectful about some of the women he's interviewed, degrading them, calling them names, and being generally misogynistic. He has described his idea of a perfect wife who would be submissive and would obey everything he asked her to do. Despite coming across as relatively unbiased in the interviews, he has spoken discourteously about the lifestyle the women he interviews have, even though he has been accused of using their services, so to speak. In a video uploaded by Kmart Radio, two men discuss some of the allegations against Tom, and reference a video uploaded by Catherine313, in which Tom can be heard arranging to meet a woman for their services, in addition to proof that he made advances towards Catherine. I assume the videos uploaded by Catherine have since been deleted, as I wasn't able to find them, so I can't confirm the validity of these claims, but Tom has admitted in a video call with others that some of the women have offered their services to him. It might be worth noting that I counted a total of 101 male interviewees, out of whom 9 had been interviewed more than once, and a total of 68 female interviewees, out of whom 26 had been interviewed more than once. So 9% of the men had been re-interviewed, and 38% of the women had been re-interviewed, some multiple times. 
Bear in mind that he has uploaded over 15,000 videos, so I might have missed some. Most of these are in his interviews playlist. This may not be relevant, but considering we know that Tom just drove around Detroit, which is nearly 200 miles away from where he lived, looking for homeless people to interview, it is interesting that he just happens to run into the women again much more frequently, and could suggest that he actively searches for the women more. He has said to some women he ran into a second time that he's been looking for them for a while. Anyway, Tom said he regretted not knocking out one of the women he interviewed when she questioned his motives, and even said he would choke her for 30 seconds, going into detail about where he would look for cameras, etc. He has made various other threats of violence to different individuals who have spoken out against him. He's made comments about plus-size women, joking, he claims, about assaulting them with a baseball bat, and has even spoken about killing people, which is particularly worrying considering the allegations we'll cover soon. He has made transphobic and racial slurs on a number of occasions, and makes it clear that he is not attracted to black women, as if anyone even asked him, and during one of the rants he said, Why do you think so many successful black men have white wives? I noticed in one interview, he seemed to be pushing the idea that black men commit more sexual assaults on the homeless women than other races. The woman who was being interviewed agreed with him and said that as a result, she refuses to have black clients. I have no idea what it's like out there, but it just seemed a strange point to make on Tom's part, and I can't help but feel that there is an agenda he's trying to push when you look at the other comments he's made about black people. There have been a few times he seemingly didn't realise that his livestream hadn't ended, and he was caught shouting at his dog in a very intimidating manner. There are allegations of him actually harming his dog too, though I wasn't able to find solid evidence of that, and he reportedly tried to give his dog away on multiple occasions. He also has a habit of feeding her human food, not even healthy human food, mostly cheeseburgers and hamburgers, which I can't imagine will be good for her. Many of the most incriminating videos have since been deleted. Some of these that were re-uploaded on other channels remain to this day, however many were taken down due to copyright claims from him. Tom rigorously moderates the comments on his videos, so the majority that call him out for his behaviour, either the vile comments he's made, or the way he treats the women he interviews, are deleted imminently. Tom has apparently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which has led to a few hospitalisations. That's not a condemnation of his behaviour, but it is a possible explanation for his unpredictable and sometimes aggressive nature. I think we've covered enough to suggest that Tom's Good Samaritan act is likely nothing but that, an act, but here's where things get really concerning. I'd like to state once again that the theories and allegations I'm about to cover are not facts, it's all speculation, I'm simply sharing information that I found online. Anyway, the Chosen One channel had mostly flown under the radar for many years until around 2019, when critics of the channel became more vocal after realising that a number of women who Tom has interviewed had died shortly after the videos were uploaded. A petition was started to get the channel taken down, and it listed seven different women, all of whom had died within a year of their interviews with Tom, some within a much shorter period of time, most of them had been murdered. Since then, I've found that six more women have also died, and as far as I'm aware, no one has been prosecuted in relation to any of these deaths. Here are the deaths listed in the petition. Nicole, who had worked the streets since around 1999, was interviewed in November 2016, and her body was found on the train tracks the following month. Penny, who had worked the streets since around 1996, was interviewed in August 2016 and was pronounced dead in April the next year after being beaten in the head and becoming comatose. Angel had worked the streets since around 2002, was interviewed in July 2017 and was found dead with a needle in her arm that same month, despite being clean from heroin for a period of time after her second interview with Tom. Kelly had worked the streets since around 1998 and was interviewed in August 2018. She died the following month, her cause of death is unknown. Monica had worked the streets since around 2012, was interviewed by Tom in May 2019, and was killed by being run over multiple times just 24 days later. Wendy was interviewed in April 2015 and her body was found in a ditch the following month, her cause of death is unknown. 
Tiffany was interviewed in August 2019 and was killed by stabbing the following month. It's worth noting that the interview with Tiffany is one of, if not the only interview that has been removed at the request of the family, because they apparently sued him. He's refused to delete any of the other videos featuring women who have died, often claiming that's not what they would have wanted, when in actuality, most of them probably only agreed to the interviews in the first place because they were getting paid for it. Since then, the deaths that I found were Ali, who died of kidney failure, Brittany, who OD'd, then went into a coma before her death, and Sweet Pea, Sarah, Raven, and Stephanie, whose causes of death I'm not sure of. As a side note, it's likely that a woman who called herself Carrie in her interview because she couldn't remember her name has since sadly passed away too because she was terminally ill due to a brain tumour that affected her memory and didn't have long left by the sound of it. But of course I won't be grouping this potential death with the others going forward. There have also been a few interviewees who chose not to reveal their names, so their current status is unknown. Hopefully they're still alive and in a better situation now. Anyway, that's a total of 13 women who have died in a relatively short space of time after being interviewed by Tom, and this has led some to wonder if he is actually murdering them. I'm gonna say now that there isn't a whole lot of evidence to back this theory up, it's all speculative, and as a result, while anything is possible, I don't actively believe that Tom is a murderer, but let's take a look at what has led some critics to suggest this. The high number of women who have died, some under mysterious circumstances, is somewhat alarming. And while there is a point to be made that these women have relatively dangerous lifestyles that put them more at risk, it's interesting that they died so soon after meeting Tom. Most of them had been on the streets for many years, up to 20 years in fact, and had survived. Yet some, like Kelly, died within a month of being interviewed. We know that Tom has a temper, he can be unpredictable, and there are various clips of him snapping, sometimes over small triggers. He has threatened violence against the women he has interviewed, and outside of the interviews, speaks of them in a derogatory manner. I watched all the interviews with the women who have died, and noticed that while the types of questions he asks could be out of general interest, and are probably to gain information his viewers might be curious to know, they also provide useful information for if Tom, or anyone watching his videos, wanted to harm the women. He usually states the exact location of where he finds them, and asks where they sleep, which regardless of whether he is in any way involved in their deaths, is extremely irresponsible when the videos are publicly available for anyone to watch. He often asks if they have any friends or family, perhaps making it clear whether or not anyone would realise if they went missing, asks what times they work on the streets, asks for the addresses of those who have somewhere to stay, asks if they see much of the police, when speaking to Angel, he said, Any problems since I last saw you? No weirdos or axe murderers? After learning of deaths, he often asks others for more information. For example, Angel mentioned that her friend Monica was murdered, and he asked if the police caught whoever did it. He also asked what the circumstances surrounding Penny's death were, and again asked if the killer was caught. In this interview, Angel said that she was leaving the area to go to Alabama soon, so that perhaps would have been the best time to harm her, and of course she was killed before she made it there. In an interview with two women just a few weeks after Tiffany was murdered, Tom claimed that he never ran into her, despite the fact that he had interviewed her less than a month prior to her death. This is one of a few lies he has told regarding the women who have been murdered. He certainly comes across a bit shady as a result. If Tom was responsible, or somehow involved in any of these deaths, you might think it would be a bit stupid of him to put himself in the firing line by publicly linking himself to these women, but he wouldn't be the first person to hide in plain sight, and it could actually form part of his alibi. If any evidence was found linking him to the victims, he could potentially explain that away because he has a reason to be in contact with them. I have heard rumours that police have been keeping an eye on him as a result of these allegations, but it's all just hearsay. 
They have been in contact over other matters. Tom himself has spoken about this on live streams, but I haven't seen any credible information to suggest they've launched an investigation into him over the deaths or that they consider him a suspect. It's important to remember that not all of the women were murdered. Some of the causes of death haven't been publicly announced, so could have been accidental or due to natural causes. And Ali, at least, died of kidney failure, which could have been due to illness or drug abuse. Regarding the fatal hit and run of Tiffany, a CCTV image has been released showing a person of interest who may have been involved, and this does not appear to be Tom. The vehicle suspected to have hit her also does not match the van that Tom is known to drive. There doesn't appear to be a consistent modus operandi between the murders too, which could suggest different murderers, unless it was a serial killer who switched up the methods to throw police off the scent. As I said before, while I am somewhat suspicious of Tom, I don't think there's enough evidence to accuse him of murder, and I don't necessarily think it would be fair to blame him for any of the deaths. But I think the way he has handled the interviews is in some ways reckless, and there is a chance that details in his videos could have made it easier for someone to harm these women. It's certainly possible that one or more of Tom's subscribers are responsible for the murders and tracked down the victims using the specific locations he gave in the videos. Knowing they were easy targets because most of them were out on the streets alone at night and weren't in contact with any friends or family that would be keeping an eye on them. Alternatively, perhaps other homeless people in the area heard about the large sums of money some of these women were receiving and that motivated them to want to harm them. Of course, it's absolutely possible that the murders had nothing to do with Tom at all or his videos, and it's just a coincidence that the victims ended up dying so soon after they were interviewed. It's impossible to say without more information. I think shedding light on the homeless community is extremely important. There are so many misconceptions regarding how people end up on the streets and what life is like for them, and Tom's interviews humanise these people and provide insight. However, I think it's fair to say after learning all the information covered in this video that Tom isn't the best person to be conducting these interviews, and it's my personal belief that he has an agenda that doesn't prioritise the well-being of the vulnerable people he talks to. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments, plus any other questionable YouTube channels or internet personalities you'd like me to cover. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing and leaving me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now, I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.